Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here with Switch Adapted Toys and today I'm going to be showing you how to adapt this ball pitching machine. Now this machine is from iPlay iLearn. Uh, I'll link to this toy, uh, an Amazon link in the description if you want to pick up this specific one. Uh, what's kind of cool about this one is that there is a uh, remote control in the back. So how this toy works is that you flip a switch to turn the motors on, but then every time you press this button, it'll feed another ball and shoot it out. Um, so some things to consider before we adapt this is once we adapt it, like this bat isn't really going to be used probably for hitting the ball any longer. You know, we're going to have a, a cord coming out of it and you'll have your button attached. So my guess is that, um, it's going to be more used for like playing catch with a friend or a sibling or something like that than it is like uh, hitting the ball with the bat. But as long as you're right with that, um, everything that we need to adapt is in this bat. So we can just go ahead and set this whole thing aside. If you like this video or if you found it helpful, hit the like button and uh, hit subscribe because we're posting new videos all the time. And it really does help us out in a huge way. So thank you in advance for that. Uh, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, what we want to do first is just remove all the screws on the back side of this bat. So with those screws removed, we should be able to separate the two halves of the bat. So in order to really separate these two halves of the bat, I had to kind of push it back into the bat a little bit. Uh, because it tapers off here and it just wasn't allowing me enough space to kind of get these two halves separated. Um, so if you're having trouble, go ahead and try that. And now we've got our everything that we need in this section here with the button. So now I'm going to remove the two screws that uh, hold the circuit board down. So here's where the button presses on the circuit board. I'm just going to remove this kind of rubber uh, button, for lack of a better word. Uh, it just pulls right out. So on the circuit board, we're going to solder one of our headphone jack wires to this point right here on the circuit board, and the other wire to the square right there on the circuit board. But before we do that, we need to drill a hole through the toy so that we can get our headphone jack wire in there. So I'm actually going to drill my hole through the other uh, half of the toy and I'm just going to make sure I line up so that I'm going to be drilling essentially right over where that red button is. Uh, you can either use a sharpie or just kind of eyeball it to kind of mark where that spot is. We just want to be close enough to that circuit board that our cord will reach. And I used a drill bit that was the same diameter of my headphone jack wire. So now we need to prep our headphone jack wire. So we like to buy our headphone jacks as splitters. Uh, think of like sharing your headphones with somebody. Uh, that way you get actually two cords for the price of one item. Uh, but we don't need this male end of the cord, so I'm just going to go ahead and snip that off. Next we need to remove some of the outside casing. So I'm just going to strip that down and pull it off. And you can see inside this headphone jack, I've got three wires. I've got a red wire, a white wire, and a yellow wire. Now the wires that you see inside your headphone jack may be completely different. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to figure out which two wires we need to combine to form one wire. Now the reason for that is our headphone jacks typically are a TRS connector. That stands for tip, ring, and sleeve. But many buttons that are out there are just a TS connector. So they just have a tip and a sleeve. They don't have a ring. And so in order to just make sure that we've got you know, compatibility for whatever switch you plug into your toy, uh, on our headphone jack wire, we need to combine the ring and sleeve wires to basically just form one wire. So, how are we going to figure that out? Well, first thing we need to do is we need to strip down a little bit of each of our wires.
All right, so next we're gonna need a couple tools. We're gonna need a multimeter and we're gonna need a switch button. Now I've got my multimeter set to ohms and now you can see whenever I basically complete the circuit by bringing my two prongs together, I get a reading on the multimeter. Uh, but anytime I separate them, it goes back and it shows OL. Um, that's basically telling me I've got a closed circuit and an open circuit, okay? So what we need to do is we need to combine two of our wires together uh, and we're just going to kind of test each combination out until we get what we are looking for. So we're looking for when we touch our probes to our wire, the multimeter says OL. So with right away, okay, without me doing anything. So you can see I'm getting a reading when I touch the wires together. So I know right off the bat that that is a, the wrong combination. So I'm going to basically twist two different wires together. So I'm gonna try combining the red wire and the yellow wire together. And I'm just gonna twist the ends. So now I've got a different combination. I touch my two wires and it still says OL, which is good. And then whenever I hit my switch button, then I get a reading. That's basically telling me I've got an open circuit when the button is not pressed. But then when I press the button, we have a closed circuit. And so that is exactly what we're looking for. So that's how I know that this is the combination of wires I need to have for my headphone jack. So sometimes these headphone jacks, that like one of the wires will not be in a sleeve. It'll just be like a bunch of bare wires. I don't have that in this case, so I can go ahead and fish this through and, and get the soldering. Uh, but if one of my wires was bare, I would want to put a heat shrink wire cover over those wires, or you could use electrical tape. Uh, what I just don't want is a bunch of bare exposed wire that could potentially touch something else on the circuit board and short something out. But here, all my wires are protected, so I am good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and fish my wires through the toy. Now before I solder my wires to the circuit board, I like to get a little bit of solder on the wires first. Uh, that just makes it a lot easier when I go to actually solder them to the circuit board. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do now. And I'm just gonna twist my wires just to make sure that they are nice and neat. Uh, what you really don't want is a bunch of like stray wires hanging out everywhere. So just twist your wires together, make sure they're nice and tight and nice and neat. And we're just gonna put a little bit of solder on each of the wires to start with. And this doesn't have to look pretty. Uh, I am not like an electrician or anything like that. Uh, as long as, <laughs> as long as it works, it works. It doesn't need to look pretty. So before I go to solder to the circuit board, I wanna use a flux pen, and I'm just gonna kinda of dab the spots that I'm gonna to solder to. That basically just kinda of cleans them off, and it prevents uh, me from burning the circuit board when I go to solder it. So a good thing to have, pick one up. So now I can go ahead and solder my wires to the circuit board. It doesn't matter which wire I solder to which point, but I just wanna make sure I get a nice solid connection there. These discs generally are not uh, the, the most secure connection, but if you take your time, you should be able to get it. I shortened this wire just a little bit because I just wanna make sure that it wasn't accidentally touching something else on the circuit board. You can give it a little bit of a tug just to make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. So before we go ahead and put everything back together, it's a good idea to test it just to make sure that everything works. So I've got a button plugged in, I've got my toy turned on, and let's see. There we go. So now we can go ahead and put things back together. So I'm gonna pull out some of the slack that I've got inside the toy. Uh, there's just not a ton of room in there, so I don't want a bunch of wire kind of bunched up in there. And I'm going to use a zip tie to kind of secure that wire and prevent somebody from accidentally pulling it out of the toy. 
So I'm just gonna wrap this zip tie around the wire on the inside of the toy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and snip off the extra zip tie. For a little bit of extra security, uh, I like to put a little bit of CA glue around that zip tie. Uh, that basically just locks it all in place. And I just use a little bit of activator and that instantly dries that CA glue. So now I can go ahead and replace the little rubber button back onto the circuit board. The little pegs on the button fit into the holes that go through the circuit board and you just kind of pull them through the back side to snug it in tight. Next we can go ahead and re-secure the circuit board and screw in the two screws that hold it down. You want to make sure you don't over tighten these because you could crack the circuit board. So now we can go ahead and put the two halves back together. So in order to get this red portion back on, uh, I can't just put the two halves together and shove it in there because it just won't fit. So I'm going to add a little bit of slack back in uh, the toy here. So I just kind of pulled the, the cord through. That way I can kind of offset these and get them to go inside this red portion of the bat. All right, now I can kind of even them back out and pull out that slack. All right, and just make sure you're not pinching any wires before you go ahead and reinsert all those screws. All right, so that's pretty much it. Let's give our button one more press just to make sure that everything still works. There we go. Well, I guess that's pretty much it. Um, if you like this video, if you found it helpful, hit that like button and hit subscribe because we are posting new videos all the time all about Switch Adapting Toys. If you want to find out more about Switch Adapted Toys, you could do so on our website at www.switchtoys.org. There we have all of our resources kind of in one place. We, we have all our uh, videos, we've got written manuals, we've got files for you to 3D print your own switch button, uh, and you, you can find out about switch chapters. So if you've got a group or an organization and you want to adapt toys kind of on a bigger scale, uh, you could form what we call switch chapters where we kind of help you uh, serve your community in that way. So I'll put a link in the description, you can check that out. And lastly, uh, if you are interested in a switch adapted toy, but doing it yourself just isn't your thing, uh, that's totally fine. We have an Etsy shop where we sell some pre-adapted toys that are ready to play with, and the proceeds there go to help support what we're doing here. So if that's something that you're interested in, uh, we all the toys that we do sell in our Etsy shop, we've got free manuals for if you want to do them yourself. Uh, but again, if that's just not your thing, we've got you covered. Uh, we want to get these toys in the, as many kids' hands as possible. So I'll put a link in the description below for the Etsy shop. And um, I guess that's it. I'm Eric with Switch Adapted Toys, and we'll see you next time. Switched Adapted Toys, making play possible.